All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Living the Dream podcast. Today, we have William Branham. Did I pronounce your last name right, William? Perfect. Yes, sir. Awesome. And he is the founder and CEO of Naked Warrior Recovery. And we're going to get to hear a lot more about that and his dreams and goals and how we can help. So, William, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for asking. And you're out of Hawaii, right? That's right. Yeah, I live in, I live on the island of Oahu. And uh, people are like, oh, you live in paradise. It must be like, you know, sitting by the pool or the beach drinking Mai Tais all the time. And I'm like, it's just like living anywhere else. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, it's very congested island. So it's kind of like living in L.A., uh, only with more beaches and warmer water in Southern California. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I love it. Uh, Hawaii is a place that I definitely want to go one day. And so we like to jump right in. If you could tell us a little Let's bit about what you like to do for fun. That would be great. Let's see. I well, I live in Hawaii, so I like surfing, and I've uh, recently started spearfishing. So those are two um, activities that I like to do a lot. They're both pretty physically challenging. Um, I also like to work out. You know, I spent 26 years in the SEAL team, so uh, being physically fit is still a, a, a large part of my life. So I, I, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I try doing hard things also. So a, a little bit earlier in the year. I joined a fundraiser to swim uh, with a bunch of other former SEALs and first responders to do the swim across the Hudson River. It's about a three and a half mile swim. And we start somewhere over in New Jersey. Uh, we do a two mile run. We hop in the water. We swim out to a barge in front of the Statue of Liberty, knock out 100 push-ups and 22 pull-ups. Then we jump back in the water. We swim over to another barge in front of Ellis Island, another 122 push-ups and pull-ups. And then we swim across the channel to lower Manhattan, which is, you know, the first year I did it was significantly harder than it was this year. Um, and, and, you know, then grab flags and run to the 9-11 Memorial and knock out another 100 uh, push-ups and 22 pull-ups and then place flags on the 9-11 Memorial. And, you know, you know, training for that was, is, was pretty difficult. I don't like to swim, despite the fact that I spent, you know, a bunch of time in the SEAL teams and and uh, did all that stuff. I don't like the water that much anymore because I guess they kind of beat it out of me. But uh, I don't like swimming. It's not part of my normal routine. But having this event uh, annually makes me do something that I don't want to do. So part of you know my fun, if you will, is also kind of pushing myself to do things that I don't really want to do physically, uh, just because it's good for your brain to to do hard things. Absolutely. No, I love that. I'm right there with you. And it's something that I have been slacking on recently in life. And it takes its toll we all do. if you don't keep up we with all do. it. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. But I love it. What is, tell us a little bit more about Naked Warrior Recovery. What is it about? So what? Naked Warrior Recovery is, uh, it's a CBD company, primarily CBD. We have some other supplements that are not CBD related, you know, some super greens and things like that for people who aren't really into CBD. But I started C, uh, Naked Warrior Recovery because after 26 years of being in the military and doing the job that I did, uh, I also have some pretty toxic relationships. I realized I had a lot of baggage and what I was doing at night was, you know, I had all this noise in my head and, and I would end up just pretty much drinking myself to sleep at night just to like turn the noise down so that I could go to sleep. You know, that noise that, you know, when you're alone at night, all these voices and and you start having these, you know, unnecessary conversations with yourself, arguing with yourself or with someone else who's not really there, uh, either when, you know, when you're by yourself or you're in the car by yourself. And, uh, and, I, and I was really struggling with that. And someone mentioned CBD to me once upon a time and uh, before it became very popular like it is today. And I, uh, I tried it. And what I tell people is I was probably water boils at 212 degrees and I was probably living my life at about 210 degrees. So it didn't take very much for me to like switch over, uh, you know, that my fuse was very short. So the difference between, you know, is where I was living and, and the boiling point was, was two degrees. And over the course of about 30 days of taking CBD, I noticed that my fuse got longer. So I went from like 210 to 205 to 200 to 195, and I was probably 190, 185, you know, uh, degrees when I ran out of that first bottle of CBD that someone gave me. And I was like, oh, maybe there's something to this. And some, like, and I also had like chronic pain and all these other issues 
that I was uh, working through. And, and I noticed that not only did I have a longer fuse, but some of these pains that I've been living with, you know, after 26 years of beating my body up, uh, they were less bad. They were still there, but they were, they were less bad. And so I thought maybe there's something to this CBD thing. And then I stopped taking it and, and I started getting closer to that boiling point and, and pain started coming back. And so, um, and then I tried another brand and then I was, and I had similar results. Then I, you know, a, a, the month later I was at a, at a business symposium and, um, I met someone in the CBD industry and she was like, Oh, do you want to do A to B, B to B, B to C? And I'm like, I want to do CBD. I don't know what those other letters are you're talking about. And so, um, she helped and, I, and she's like, well, why don't you just start your own CBD company? And I said, I don't know how to do that. And she said, you're, you're a Navy SEAL. Go figure it out. And I was like, oh, um, can I, may, I, may I please have my man card back and I'll go <laughs> figure it out. So, um, so I started digging into the, in the indus, into the CBD industry and I realized it was a very dirty industry and it's still pretty dirty today. It's, it's cleaning up a lot, but there's a lot of bad actors out there, people just out there to get rich quick. And so as I started going down this road of, of researching CBD and maybe starting my own company, I, I realized that there's a, a lack of quality in the industry. So my purpose was to um, start a company that had the highest quality of any other company in the market. And so Naked Warrior Recovery is one of the top uh, companies when it comes to quality of product. And, you know, even the biggest names that you could think of that are in, you know, you, maybe you get emails or you see them in, in, you know, health food stores, our quality, because we've done the research is higher than their quality. Uh, they just have deeper pockets and they're doing some other things. Um, but we have the highest quality on, on the market. I love it. I love it. And I love your motivation for it. You know, you got to the point where you were fighting yourself up here at night realized CBD was helping you out with that. And now you're starting a company to also help people out with that same issue. Help other people. I mean, it helped with, it helped me and I've, and I've gotten, you know, tons of feedback from other people, how it's helped them. It helps different people in different ways. And sometimes you just kind of have to be more aware of, of, it's not like you take it and then there's rainbows and unicorns. You don't get high. You don't really feel anything. What you kind of feel is just less, less stress, less anxiety, less pain at the end of the day, you still have, you know, these physiological things that are going on with you mentally, psychologically, emotionally, that you still have to work through. And, and we can talk a little bit about that in a minute. But uh, CBD, it was for me, and for a lot of people, it's a modality to help, uh, you know, at least turn down the noise in my head, and it turns down the noise in some other people's said, so you can actually focus on what the problem is. And then, you know, turn down those those voices or whatever it is and have good positive self-talk and, and, uh, and, 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 a, and a positive mindset. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And so now we're going to go ahead and jump into your dreams and goals. So what are some of your dreams and goals for your company and just your life in general? So I would like to dreams and goals. This was, this is pretty new actually. So as a, as a kid, I wanted to become, you know, be part of the, you know, the, the biggest, uh, the best, the baddest, military uh special forces in the world and i did that yep so i i did that for a long time for oh, like a quarter of a century and you know now that i'm retired from that now i have to you know move on to my my next dreams and my next goals which was that was a hard transition going from like knowing what you're going to do every day how you're going to do it the, the 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 having a badass team you know that you're working with working for uh leading uh with a badass mission to going to nothing. So now I've had to kind of rebuild and figure out what those dreams and goals were. Now, my, my, my dreams and goals are to uh, help as many people as possible with stress, anxiety. Uh, in the, the Veterans Affairs has uh, estimated that 22 veterans take their lives every single day. And we've lost more veterans to suicide than we have in 20 years of sustained combat since 9-11. And we, you know, we were 9-11 was 20 years ago. And so we've been in sustained combat ever since then. Um, and despite what you see on the news, there's still, we're still actively engaged in, in active combat. Um, but we're still losing 22 veterans a day. So my goal is to make that 22 to zero 
so that we no longer have this uh, veteran suicide epidemic, but also to help other people. You know, you don't have to be a veteran or first responder to to get the benefits of CBD, to get the benefits of, of changing your mindset and changing the way that you're thinking about the world. So, so my goal, my other dream is to, in that process, is to get up on stages and talk to people about, you know, a, a different mindset, you know, the get naked mindset, which, which that I've kind of come up with. And, uh, and I believe that this get naked mindset can positively affect everything in your life. I haven't found anything that, that it can't affect. And I'm open to my, I'm open to challenges and we can kind of go over what the get naked mindset is. Yeah. Let's do it right now. So uh, naked. So naked is a, it's an acronym because in the military, we love acronyms. And so, uh, it's kind of a five part series and the N stands for never quit. And I don't mean never quit smoking or drinking or, or porn or, or, you know, uh, stop, you know, never quit, you know, this toxic relationship that you're in. It means never quit on yourself. It means never quit, uh, trying to achieve the goals that you have set for yourself. And so in the SEAL teams, or actually in SEAL training, there's one week that's the most famous week of, of all um, of all military training in the world. And it's called Hell Week. And it's five and a half days of no sleep. You're cold, you're wet, you're miserable the entire time. Uh, but there's one thing that is constant no matter what. And that is they're going to feed you four times a day. And so it doesn't matter how terrible or how cold or how miserable you are, all you have to do is make it to that next meal. You can be just jack hammering, hammering there in the ocean and you know that this evolution is gonna end. So all you gotta do is make it to that next meal. And so if you have you know, goals, dreams, aspirations, you, have, uh, you, know, you, you wanna get a degree, you wanna start a business, you wanna join the military, you wanna become a Navy SEAL, you wanna start a podcast, it's not gonna be an automatic success overnight. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take growth. And so, what you have to do is you have to take that giant goal that you have in your life and you have to chop it up into, you know, bite-sized pieces. And every day you work on those bite-sized pieces and you focus only on that bite-sized piece. You kind of compartmentalize. Okay. All you got to do is make it to the next meal. All you got to do is achieve that small victory. And once you continue achieving those small victories, then, and keep working on your goal, then, and never quit, then you're going to have success. The A is accept failure because Anytime that you're doing something that's worth doing, it's probably going to be hard and there's going to be, and you're not going to know how to do things, but you have to be brave enough to try. Failures taught me lessons that no other amount of, uh, no amount of money could have ever paid for. The experiences I had, I wouldn't trade for, you know, millions of dollars in the world. And, and, you know, maybe one day those failures and the future failures that I have will help me, you know, acquire millions of dollars so that I can help more people. Um, but if you, if you look at the people in, you know, current times, people, a lot of times will say, oh, you're, you're a Navy SEAL. You don't, you don't care about failure, things like that. I'm like, that's the, that's the furthest thing from the truth. You know, in SEAL training, we fail multiple times uh, a week, usually multiple times a day. And oftentimes you can do everything perfect. You can be, you know, the strongest, the fastest, the loudest, the best team player leader, you're still going to fail. And most of the people in SEAL training that quit, they quit because it was a psychological failure. They couldn't stand the fact that they were told that they weren't good enough. And so it wasn't that they were physically unfit. I mean, most of these people were like Olympic caliber athletes. And I was mediocre in my physical fitness at best. And I was like, you guys, this seems so easy for you. How can you dare quit? But they couldn't stand the thought of being told that they weren't good enough. So you have to be able to accept failure, learn from that failure, and then grow from it. I mean, if you just use examples like Michael Jordan, arguably the best basketball player of all time. He's blocked. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm, we're good. We, we can, we can duel on that one, uh, on that one later, but, uh, he's missed more than, and I, this is why, this is why he is the best of all time. Uh, because he's missed more than 9,000 shots in his career. Uh, he's lost more than 300 games. He's missed more than 30 game winning shots. And you know what he did every time that he missed, uh, a shot, Win or lose, he would go back to the gym that night and he would work on that shot over and over in every scenario possible until he got it right, until he didn't miss again. And those, those failures, those misses are the things that made him better. If you look at Steve Jobs or Elon Musk, both CEOs of very prominent, powerful companies as they're growing up, both fired as CEOs of those prominent, powerful companies as they were coming up. And you know what happened? Now look at them. Like Apple and Tesla are 
two of the biggest companies in the world. Um, if you look at Thomas Edison, he learned 10,000 ways to not create the incandescent light bulb. He had more than 10,000 failures in trying to create that thing. And then on 10,001, he, he figured it out. So he accepted those failures. Every one of those people accepted those failures as lessons. And I look at failure as like these building blocks that, or stairs or ladders, uh, rungs in a ladder. Every time you fail, you get a new, a new foundation and a new level to that foundation. And it just becomes higher. And it doesn't matter how tall that wall is, that obstacle that's in front of you, eventually you fail enough, you're just gonna be able to hop right over it because you've learned all the ways to not uh, get around that obstacle. Uh, the, the K is kill mediocrity. So in this world of instant gratification and scrolling and, and you can you know, hit a button on your phone and have ice cream delivered to your house and, and you know, 30 minutes or less from Amazon, we don't have that here in Hawaii because it would certainly be melted by the time it got here. But uh, we've, we've, we've just kind of become mediocre. We, we've decided that, um, you know, there's, we can find excuses to not do things that we need to do, to not attack our goals, to not, to not work out. And what that is, that's our ego. And, you know, one of the ways that we kill mediocrity is we, we, we compete. Uh, it was easy in the SEAL teams because I had, you know, accountability partners. I don't really like that word, but we had, I, you know, it didn't matter if a guy was senior to me or junior to me or equal to me. He's expecting me to perform better than I did yesterday. And I expect the same thing out of him. So if I show up and I'm not putting forth my best effort, the, the junior guy is going to call me out on it. And I'm like, that's, that's not okay. That's going to, you know, it, you know, damage my ego. And that's going to make me perform a little bit better, but we're surrounded by mediocrity every day, you know, entitlement and all these other things. We're not, we're not, you know, um, we're not encouraged to work and, and, and do hard work. Um, so because of that, we've become a mediocre society. And the way you beat mediocrity is you compete. And in the SEAL teams, we would compete with one another inside the platoons, with the different platoons, with the different teams. Uh, but, you know, ways we can compete as just regular people, regular civilians, we can compete in kindness, we can compete in generosity, we can compete against our own ego, the ego that knows every, um, everything about us, it knows our strengths, it knows our weaknesses, knows just what to say to make us find an excuse to not do something. So when we can compete against our ego, we can kill mediocrity in our life and improve the lives of the people around us. The A is accept failure. Um, I'm sorry. The E is expose your fears. It was just the way it was in the screen there. E is expose your fears. And, and what I mean by that, I don't mean lions and tigers and bears, oh my, spiders and, and you know what goes bump in the night. I mean those fears that I was kind of talking about earlier. Those, it lives in a deep, dark place in the back of your brain and it only comes out when you're alone and you're quiet. And it's the things that you don't want to tell people about, those fears that you, you, you don't want the world to know about. And that's how fear controls you. And I like to think about fear like a vampire because a vampire, it, you know, its job is to suck the life out of you, uh, just like fear. Fear will suck the life out of you and, and will, and will you know, make you quit on your dreams and goals and aspirations. And, um, but how do you kill a vampire? You expose it to sunlight. And that's the same thing that you have to do to fear. You expose your fears. And uh, this is a trick that a, a friend and a business coach of mine told me once upon a time. And he said, fear does not exist on paper. He, you know, he's a, he's a multi-billionaire. He's made you know, lots of money throughout his life. He's still teaching. He's still entrepreneuring. He's still running lots of businesses. And he still has stress and anxiety about all sorts of things. And he'll be driving along. And uh, these fears are just kind of get you know, start controlling him and, you know, his anxiety goes up. And so what he'll do is he'll pull over, he'll pull into a Starbucks. It doesn't matter what he's got going on. He's like, I just need to get a hold of this. He'll pull in, he'll go inside, he'll order a coffee, he'll sit down and he'll take a pen and a piece of paper, not on his phone, a pen and a piece of paper, and he'll write down everything that's bothering him. So what he's done is he's transferred that fear that somewhere in the back of his mind, down his arm and onto a piece of paper. Now he's exposed that fear to the world. Now he can control that fear. I mean, just try that. You have something that's bothering you, write it down, say it out loud. You've just taken control of that fear. That fear will no longer control you. You may have to do this multiple times. And that's why people go to, you know, they, they get, you know, professionals that they talk to and that professional, you know, conversationals that they're talking to, to kind of like dig into like childhood trauma or whatever their issues are. 
you know, that's exposing their fears. And so the E is expose your fears. And the last one is D is do the work because it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you have dreams, goals, aspirations, it requires work. You can't show up every day and just expect it to happen. You got to do the work. So you have to never quit, accept failure, kill mediocrity, expose your fears and do the work. And that's what the get naked mindset is all about. It's about taking your ego off, setting it in the quarter, being a little bit vulnerable, exposing yourself and getting after it. I love it. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> that was a very thorough answer to my question. I, that is great. And you really do need to be speaking about that every day. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I've got to I've actually have an event uh, coming up next week. Next week, I think be my first my first speaking event so awesome awesome uh where can i buy the book <laughs> you know what actually if you go to the number five sealsecrets.com five sealsecrets.com for all of your listeners also um you just put your name and email in there and i will email you a copy of basically that outline gotcha awesome five the number five sealsecrets.com Sounds good. Love it. That'll, and that'll be in the show notes um, for everybody who wants to go to it and everybody who's listening should go to it. <laughs> um, awesome, man. Well, let's go over. Um, I, we kind of touched on it earlier, but what really caused you to take that first step towards the CBD business? Was it talking to that woman? Was it just how it affected you in general? Or So it was about how CBD was such a positive, had a, such a positive impact on my life, my quality of life. I thought I need to share this with other people. I did not intend on starting my own company. I wanted to work for a CBD company, learn as much as I could, and then help that company grow. But she was like, just go start your own company and stop being a baby about it. And so I, you know, but, you know, it was also a lot of me being a lot of self-doubt in myself you know people are like oh you this background and that i have tons of self-doubt that i have had to overcome and i still do sometimes but i'm i've i have uh created tools for myself and a lot of it is that get naked mindset tools that i need to overcome self-doubt to to figure out what my next um next ridge line is what's my next goal you know, a lot of times we go through life and we have these, these peaks and then we think that's the end state and hitting that peak is never the end state. That peak is just on your way up to the next peak. And, you know, there's like 9,999,000 9 peaks in front of me. And if I get to that first peak and I stop, what I stop doing is I stop looking up because there are so many more peaks for me to hit. You know, I graduated Hell Week. I graduated SEAL training. I did these certain things in the SEAL teams. Those are not peak. Those are like mini peaks. There are so many more peaks for me now that I'm out and I'm, you know, have my own business and I'm doing some coaching. I'm doing some teaching. I'm doing some contract work. I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of stuff um, because I have so many more goals and peaks in front of me. And in a lot of that, I don't know how to do it, but I have to figure it out. And that's part of the uh, kind of part of the process is, you know, start a company. You know, one of my, my business coach that I talked about earlier, he's like, starting a company is the hardest thing that you can possibly do. If I could, if I could give anyone advice, don't start a company, go and buy a company. If you're a W-2 guy, save up some money and go buy a company. That's way easier than starting a company from ground zero. And now that I have the education that I have now and the experience, i which for sure would probably agree a hundred percent. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I love that, man. And if there were one or two, no, if there was one type of person that you could meet right now, that would help you take the next step in your CBD business and helping people understand the get naked mindset, who would that person be and how would they do it? That would probably be, I don't know who it is right now, but it would be like the super ninja of marketing. And then maybe it's like the, 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 my pillow guy or the, the oxy clean guy who's no longer here. Those, those, those people have mastered their craft of, of getting their message out. And, you know, 
of, of you know, they are taking a simple idea and sharing that. And everyone knows, you know, what OxyClean is. Everyone knows what my pillow. They everyone knows what all of these things are. Someone who's really good at that, that can help me spread the word of you know the, the get naked mindset. And I think you know naked is a little bit edgy, so it gets people's attention. Um, so that's a little bit part of it. But yeah, if there was someone that that could help me simplify what I have and 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 share it with as many people as possible, I think that's that's the kind of person that I would I would look for. To yeah, absolutely. I love it. And what is the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to help you accomplish this? Wow. Um, I would say go to fivesealsecrets.com and learn about those five seal secrets. Learn about the get naked mindset. Um, and the other thing is just to share. You know, there was, the, uh, there was a commercial, I think, once upon a time, and it said, you know, and I told two people and they told two people and they shared it with two people and they shared it with two people. If two people can just continue to do that, every single day, we could, you know, we can share the get naked mindset around the world in, in no time at all. I love it. I love it. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with network marketing or honestly, a little bit, a little, how, a little bit. Yeah. Or how the gospel spread, <laughs> but it's just like, um, it's that concept, you know, you tell a couple people and you actually build, you tell them based on like building a relationship. And when you have that relationship that's built and then they tell people they have relationships with, I feel like the message is communicated in a more impactful way as opposed right. to being like spammed with advertising. So yeah. Right. A hundred percent. Awesome. I mean, that, that organic reach and it's, and it's interesting. That's, I can't, I cannot because, you know, Facebook and Instagram and everyone else views CBD as an, an illicit substance, even though it's federally legal or, you know, it's legal. Yeah. Um, they still view it as a, an illicit substance. So I can't market, I can't market like that. So the way that I've grown is through word of mouth. It's through, you know, getting on podcasts. It's through um, giving away free products. It's been through, you know, growing my Instagram and, and just like putting out like, you know, different mindsets uh, for people to kind of think about different ways to think, think like more like a Navy SEAL. Um, and just to apply to your life, you know, my, my emails go out, you know, and once a week I put in like some sort of seal lesson learned that I have, you know, from my, from my 26 years. So, um, just trying, you know, one step at a time, one person at a time, just trying to, uh, impact someone's life in a positive manner. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. And so now we're going to jump into our thriving three, and this is just three ways that you really take care of yourself to make sure that you thrive. So we like to hit on how you're taking in information, how you care for yourself and what action you're taking right now. So what's your favorite book, podcast or movie? Pick one. Current favorite book is Winning by Tim Grover. Awesome. I haven't heard of that one, actually. It's a new it's uh, his I think it's his newest book out. And, uh, you know, in that book, he talks a lot about uh, Michael Jordan's work ethic he talks about LeBron. He talks about some other people. Um, and that's really, that's his second book. His first book was, I uh, forgot, Unbreakable, Unbeatable, something like that. Yep. Uh, and this is more of a continuation uh, from, from his first book. It's, it's fantastic. Love it. Love it. Well, I will definitely have to add that to my reading list. Thanks for sharing. Um, what's one way you like to care for yourself? I clearly CBD. Um, working yes. out, but, uh, you know, I drink, I drink at least a gallon of water a day and I do it through like, I, I, I mix, it's not an ad, but I mix, you know, one packet of, uh, of our CBD energy drink with a half gallon of water. And I do that twice a day. And that's, you know, it tastes, makes the water taste a lot better and it's a little more fun and you're getting some micro doses of, of CBD. I don't know if micro dose is a bad word or not, but it's small doses of CBD and some caffeine throughout the day. Hey, you're going to have to, you're going to have to pay me for that ad that you just put up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, awesome, man. I love that. Um, I was on the gallon of water. This is what I mean by I fell off in high school. I was drinking a gallon of water a day and I graduated high school, wasn't playing sports anymore. And it just, man. So thank you for, right. it's like, you just have to like make it like, and, it, and it's, and it's just those small victories. Mm -hmm. And once you master 
a gallon of water a day. And I start it with before I have a cup of coffee, I, you know, this cup of coffee right here, I fill it up with, with water and I take some vitamins. And then while my coffee's brewing over here, so I start my day off with water and then I end my day with water. Absolutely. No, I love it. And so what's one action step you can take right now, let's say to find that master of marketing? I have a, I just have to ask, ask for help. I have to ask people to help me find that master of marketing, which is, you know, part of that exposure fears and which of those five seal secrets has been the hardest one and most impactful one for me is exposing my fears because I've never wanted to ask for help. I came from a very poor family in, in Meridian, Mississippi, and we didn't have much. I didn't even ask my parents for help. I didn't for like, you know, books for school. I would go and cut the grass and I would pay for, you know, things like that on my own. Um, Cause I know, I knew we didn't have any money. And so asking for help was, is really the hardest thing because I didn't want to look weak or insignificant. Uh, so the thing that I can do is I can continue to ask more people for help to help me find that person or those people to help me spread the word, to get on stage, to get in front of more people, to, to whatever it is. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sounds good. Sounds good. And do you have any um, podcast or anything that you do for the Get Naked brand? I do not currently have a podcast that I'm doing. Um, I do, I do some, some podcasting for an organization called Operators Association. And their, their, their business is to help young men and women who want to become part of special operations in some form or fashion to help prepare them for it. So I give them, you know, I do podcasts. It's, it's a paid, it's a paid platform, but I give my, uh, my experiences, you know, from, you know, joining the Navy, the failures that I've had along the way, just getting to SEAL training. So it took me three years from the day I joined the Navy before I walked in the front door of, of, of BUDS of basic underwater demolition SEAL training. And, you know, it could have been a much shorter route, but I made some tactical errors along the way. So I share my, my, my errors. I share my experience through, uh, through SEAL training. I share my experience as a new guy. I share my experience as a senior guy, I experience some of my experience overseas uh, in, in co doing combat operations and, and some other things. So um, those are the, the dedicated, I, I don't even know if it's really dedicated. They asked me to do podcasts, so I help them out, uh, but I don't have my own podcast platform. Maybe I should start one, who knows? Gotcha. Yeah, man. I would listen to it. Talking about the get naked okay. mindset. I feel like that's something everybody needs. And so you would definitely have a lot of content, but, um, awesome. Is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? I think, let's see, let me think about that. So you got five seal secrets.com. Yep. I would just encourage everyone to go there, download that. And, uh, yeah. And then, you know, print it out and use it in your daily life. And if you can't, and I don't want you to try to incorporate it into your entire life. Just pick one area in your life. Pick that one area that you think you need the most amount of help in and then incorporate. Maybe you can't incorporate all five of these into that one area. Incorporate two and then three and then five. And then once you've mastered that one area with these five seal secrets, then bring on another area and then another area until you've like, you've really mastered, you start to master your life with these five seal secrets of never quit, accept failure, kill mediocrity, expose your fears and do the work. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, if you were listening to this podcast and you liked anything William had to say, feel free to reach out to him. Feel free to get yourself acquainted with the Get Naked brand and also encourage him to start his podcast because I want to listen to it. <laughs> awesome. Also, if you know that super ninja of marketing, connect William to the super ninja and let's 100%. get this man what he needs so he can get us what we all need. Um, I like it. Last thing, thank you so much for listening to the show and please go like and subscribe on Apple. Send it to one person that you know needs this get naked mindset and re-listen to it because you know you need to hear it again. Sounds good. William, thank you so much for being on the show. I like it. Thanks so much for having me on here. I appreciate you. Yeah, of course. I appreciate you, man. And we're out.